Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to check out Breathe by Pink Floyd. All time classic. Great tune, this one. I'm going to do an electric, more detailed version where we talk about the sounds and some of the little patterns that are being played. But it's such a great, like, sing-along campfire kind of a tune. I wanted to do a slightly simplified acoustic version as well. I'm going to take you through like really basic versions of the chords and then gradually introduce some more advanced concepts of the way that you might do it. The first eight bars of the progression is alternating between one bar of E minor and one bar of A. E minor, you're probably going to use fingers two and three in the second fret on the fourth and fifth strings. The A chord, there's lots of different ways to play it. Some people use fingers one, two, three, straighten the line like that. I tend to prefer using my first finger on the third string. I think that's a better way to play A generally, but it doesn't really matter to be honest. So the first chunk of this tune, here we go. So E minor. Breathe, breathe in the A, two, three, four, E minor. Don't be afraid of A, E minor. But don't A me. Look, E minor, and choose your own A. Now the next little section is just four bars more. It's a C major seventh chord, and there's a few different ways of approaching this chord. Probably the easiest one is to start with a regular C chord, lift off your first finger, you've got C major seven. I think on the original recording, there's a low G played as well. So you can use third finger on the third fret of the thicker string, little finger down on the third fret of the fifth string, second finger down, second fret of the fourth string. Or you could use even the fingers one, two, and three, just like you were playing an A minor chord, but in the wrong part. That one works as well. So it's a C major seventh chord slash G if you're gonna put that low bass note on. But again, if you're a beginner and you're really simplifying it, just stick with the regular C, lift off the first finger. It's one bar of that. Now the next chord is B minor seven, which is a bar chord like this. A lot of people will find this a bit difficult, particularly beginners, but there's an easier way of doing it, particularly going from the C major 7. If we go C major 7 and we move down, uh, lift off second finger, move third finger down one fret and add little finger down in the second fret of the third string. It's kind of not exactly a B minor 7 anymore, it's got an added fourth in there, but it'll sound great for the tune. So, da, 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 oh, you fly, smiles you give. You cry and all you touch. And now we're going to an F major 7, 3rd finger, 3rd fret, 4th string, 2nd finger, 2nd fret, 3rd string, 1st finger, 1st fret, 2nd string, and open thinner string. If you're clever, you can get your thumb around to play that bass note as well. You don't have to, again, if you're a beginner, you're not going to be able to do that, so just be happy with that thinner part. F major 7. Then we got two beats on G6. Now again, the original recording has this F major seven, it slides the same shape up two frets. Okay, so third fret, muted, fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret, open thinner string. That's gonna be hard again for most beginners. Much easier to play F major seven to G6 like this. So all we need is the third finger on the third fret of the thicker string, muted the fifth string, thinnest four strings open. Now we've got the one tricky chord. It's only for two beats. So it's on beat three and four of that last bar. The actual chord is this. This is the Hendrix chord, it's commonly called. It's D7 sharp nine. Fifth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, sixth fret in the middle four strings. Okay, second finger, first finger, third finger, little finger. And then the second chord is the same, but first finger's gone flat get this fourth fret on the second string. Okay, if you find that really difficult, a nice little cheat is to do this, open fourth string, first finger in the fifth fret of the third string, uh, third finger in the sixth fret of the second string, just like a D, kind of like a D chord. But we're just gonna play those fourth string, third string, second string. Then second finger will go where first finger was and first finger will move back to the fourth fret of the second string. Okay, so. E 
could do it this way if you want. Or you could just learn the B chord. Up to you. Okay? So let's take it right the way through that whole progression now. So E minor. Two, three, four, and A. Two, three, four. Back to E minor. Two, three, four to A. Two, three, four. And E minor again. A, two, three, four. last time, E minor, going to A, now C major 7, along you live, I go fly, to B minor 7, the cheer, tears you cry, for F major 7, and all you see is G6, then the D7 sharp 9, flat 9, E minor. Okay, now let's try spicing it up a little bit because there are a few ways of altering the chords that sound really cool, much more like the original recording and they're not particularly difficult. The first one is this E minor 9. I'm using my first finger in the second fret of the fifth string and my little finger in the fourth fret of the fourth string. The rest of it is open. So there's regular E minor. Here's E minor 9. We get this nice clash here. If you want to make it sound more, much more like the original, you hit beat 1, the bass note, and then on beat 2, you drag the pick up. 1, 2, 3, 4 to A. 2, 3, 4, 1. Now here's a little movement on the A chord, is A sus4 to A, and again that's happening on the original recording, there's other ways that he's doing it as well, which I said, as I mentioned, I'll take you through in a more detailed electric version shortly, you can find it over on the website. But just for now, for acoustic guitar, just adding your little finger down, if you've got your A chord, adding little finger on the third fret of the second string, it doesn't matter which way you're playing A, it's the old traditional one. Okay, so now we've got E. A, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Now, there's this other way of playing at E minor 9. And this, I don't think this is on the record. I can't hear it played by Gilmore. But if you're playing it on your own, playing it at a campfire, it can sound pretty nice just to add either little finger or third finger, depending on which way you're playing the E minor chord. If you're using second and third fingers, you'd use little finger down in the second fret of the thinner string. Gives you a nice E minor nine, is the name of that chord. Same as this chord. It's the same note. It's the note F sharp. We're adding an F sharp to an E minor chord. C major 7. Now let's just talk about this B minor and some of these options here again for the B minor. You can do, this is the, the, the way it's played on the original recording, which is nothing on the thicker string, 2nd fret, 4th fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret. So 1st finger's got to hold down the thinner string, the 3rd string and the 5th string. Okay, A lot of beginners will find that difficult, which is why there's these other variations. You can either do this, not playing the thicker string again, 2nd fret, open, 2nd fret, open, open. You can also play it like this if you want to get that F sharp on the top. This is just like a B7 chord. Some of you will be already familiar with B7, but like that with the first finger off. You get B minor 7, okay? F major 7, we already talked about just Probably the best beginner version is just the, playing the thinnest four strings, but if you're real clever, you can get that bass note over. I sometimes use my third finger to hold down both the fifth and fourth strings, but that is a much more advanced technique, probably not one that many of you want to be going at to start off with. The G6, as I said, is the same shape, 
moved up still with the open thinner string or just play like that still adding that E note which is what makes it a G6 and you got that fancy pants chord the D7 sharp 9 the D7 flat 9 okay to E minor As far as strumming goes, you want to be aware that it's 16th note strumming. So it's one and two and three and four and all down strums. Even if you're thinking just one, two, three, four. If you're thinking all downs just one, two, it feels a bit kind of too labored and a bit slow. So you want to be thinking one, and two, and three, and four and even though on the edge you might not strum. So you might go one, two, three, four. And it doesn't have to be a big movement. It's about how you're feeling the time as much as actually what you're playing. So really trying to get that one, two, three, four. One. If you're doing that upstroke, you have to be thinking a little bit more because you're going one, two, three. And on beat three, you want to come back in again with your down pick, otherwise it might throw you all off balance. Because generally speaking, one, two, three, and four is going to be a down strum. So as soon as you put that up strum, one, two, three, it can really throw you off if you're not careful. So be aware that back on beat three, you want to be continuing with your down strums. On the original recording, there's a little bit more where he's picking notes out individually. So particularly at the beginning, you get this. Okay, thinner string, second string, or second string, third string. Both would be up picks. So I have this one. Keeping that up, up would be where those. Yes. Up, up. One, two, three, and up, four, and. Okay, so really trying to keep those up picks uh, on the individual notes if you want to take it again close to the record. More on this in the electric version. Uh, hopefully that will be enough to get you going on a real basic version, but as well give you a little bit of food to try and explore some of these variations as well. Such a beautiful song, quite powerful lyrically as well, worth checking out if you haven't read through the lyrics before. I uh, hope you enjoy this one. I'll see you for the electric one. We'll talk a bit more about the effects and that wonderful Univibe sound that he's got going on for the original. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. And remember, there's hundreds of free lessons over on the website, all nicely organized for you. So do go and check that out on the link in the description. If you're over on YouTube, if you're over on the website already, you know all about it. I'll see you for more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.